Right. So my name is Sue Spence. I'm a long-term pearl geek. <laughs> and it's actually been my paycheck for quite a long time, along with other things. Once in a great while, I actually get to use pearl for something that's really helpful to me personally. And this was one time recently. Um, so get me to the pub. Wanted some exercise, <sighs> and I started jogging. I'm really bad at all exercise, but I tried that. I wasn't finding it really helpful, partly because I have a very short attention span and I don't like pain. I also wanted to meet people because I found it a bit tedious um, running on my own, or jogging, or walking, or whatever I was doing. And then this happened. There is actually an, a truly international group of people who actually like to run or walk or jog or whatever. And they're very sociable. And they are really strange. <laughs> it's a fun kind of strange. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> and this is true, actually. They drink a lot of beer um, worldwide. They drink other things, too, but they drink an awful lot of beer. In fact, the uh, combined London um, groups of this particular organization actually run a beer stop at the London Marathon. <laughs> and when I say beer stop, they go, they go to, they order a keg of Shepherd Neem beer, uh, ale, take a load of, of um, pint cups, plastic cups, and hand them to anybody who wants them. <laughs> Which, as you might imagine, the front runners don't want that, but <laughs> more than you would think want them. <laughs> In fact, a couple of guys that, that uh, stopped, they just they said, we said, do you want a beer? And, they, and the guy said, I would feckin' love one. He says, does somebody have a, somebody have a flag? <laughs> and they finished, they finished the race. <laughs> so that's the Hash House Harriers. Now, who here has ever run into the Hash House Harriers? Yep. <laughs> and you, of course. Yep, very good. They are everywhere. Um, they, are in, they are in your pubs drinking your beer. They are running around shouting in the streets. They're running around in forests, woods, whatever. They are doing all sorts of inane things. They love fancy dress. The weirder, the better. And um, sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> And the, and the thing that I, I found amazing about them, other than the fact that not only is it social, very social, non-competitive running, in fact, they will quite often punish people who act like they're really hard runners. <laughs> they, will they will aggressively do that sometimes if you're really, if you're really into it. <clears throat> in London alone, there, are, there, are, there is a vast array of, of um, events that they run as well as weekly runs. There are at least three or four groups that do week, they run every week as well as, and none of it was any sort of digital calendar format at all. In fact, I did a, around the time that I started noticing this and pondering about it, I actually, you know, started using uh, the various search capabilities that we all know and love. And I actually couldn't find any of them worldwide that were even doing this. There were one or two groups that had made att abandoned attempts to do meetup or something like that, which will give you iCal type data. But they just, they just weren't doing it. The runs are, they're all arranged by a lot of just handmade, really broken websites, most of them. None, none of the, almost none of them will will actually pass any sort of validation. So this, this, you know, at a high level, you'd think you probably couldn't really extract data from that even. None of them, they were, they were all volunteers, and virtually none of them had any kind of professional experience with creating websites. So if you were going to ask them something like, if you put some semantic information on your, in your HTML, then I could parse it better. You know, I didn't actually do this because I knew better, because it just would be a waste of time. But I, I asked the one, that, the, the one in London who, had, who was by far the closest to a professional webmaster if he, would, if, he, if he could provide, say, a feed of this information. And he just looked at me like I was, 
which I am, but that's okay. <laughs> so all these events are hugely well attended. They, but it kept bothering me, you know, all of this, this event data, it was just there, and I wanted it. <laughs> and I wanted it specifically on my phone, because especially in London, they have, they meet, they start at a pub and end at a pub. They, they go to the pub, get ready to run, go running for three to five K or however long. And the pubs could be anywhere in a very, you know, fairly large area. And I was typing in, you know, I was having to type in where it was or something. I, I would forget because I go to work, I'm done with work. I can't remember where it is and I go, oh my God. I was like, you know, surely there has to be a better way. And as pro, pro programmers, I think a lot of us, you scratch us and you end up with somebody who wants to automate something. And that's in fact what I have done during a good bit of my career. And I started thinking about this, as I've said, probably too much. <coughs> now it happens, here's the, they also, they're really into shirts. They're just like, you know, the most geek co subcultures you run across. And this is a particularly fabulous shirt. That's the, uh, the motto of the, uh, the city of London, the Corporation of London actually, but it's been subverted. The lions have running shoes on. There's, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. And they organize all their runs via their website. And they even advertise it on all their shirts. And I thought about it a bit more and I thought, well, I'm, I'm actually making this too hard for myself. I need a calendar. I was already using uh, Google Calendar just because it was easy. And I also knew that um, Google Calendars, regardless of what anybody thinks about Google and how, you know, they, you know, their impact in our lives, but um, they, they make a big effort to export data in ways that a lot of, that, that can be used by a lot, a lot of different clients, a lot of devices. And it had, you know, it had other good features such as the full API. There, I, I actually don't know of another company that provides a very easy to obtain calendar that you can share with the world, has a full read-write API, so you can create events, to delete them, do whatever you want. Maps integration was key, because if I could get the location, just the location into the um, a calendar entry, then I just click a link and then I've got a map to where it is. I've got half a chance or more than half a chance to get there as long as the tube doesn't break down. Supported by a wide number of mobile clients, I tried, I, I just picked random people in the pub with different types of phones that as long as it was a smartphone of some sort, it doesn't have to be a Nexus 5, but Windows phones, anything like that, if I gave them a little bit of instruction as to how to subscribe to the calendar, they could see it. And I had seen people saying occasionally that they wanted this kind of thing. And another thing that struck me was that we had, you know, like many big cities, London has a lot of people that just turn up and if they knew about hashing, they might try, because they might be bored for a couple of days, they would try to find one. And one night we were sitting, we were, uh, after a run, we were standing in the pub chatting about nothing and a woman came in with her iPad. She had followed turn by turn instructions from, and we were out, we were fairly far out. She'd used her iPad to get to, to this group of people <laughs> and I thought, yeah, there's really some, there's a really a percentage in somehow getting this, this information in a calendar with linkage via maps. Any maps would do. Open street map would be great too. <laughs> I could also, you know, it's an easy interface if there were, if there were any problems getting the, the information automatically on the, on the calendar. I myself with a few clicks can just fix it. There are loads of helpful people that, that, um, are in, are in these, um, that, that hash, and some of them are fairly technical. And I could even give them access to it. I could give them admin access and they could fix it themselves. So altogether it was starting to look fairly compelling. So I started with a, a case study. And I used this one because this is the, the, the biggest crowd in London. This is the biggest group. They have probably an average of 40 to 45 people plus every week to go on a runs, whether it's raining, hailing, nice, doesn't matter what, they will come there. They, 
swamp pubs. It's hard to find a pub sometimes that's big enough for them. So this one. Another, uh, another thing that I needed was a, a really easy way to do this. I needed to be able to knock up a prototype pretty quickly because it wasn't something that I wanted to spend all my time on. I just wanted to get this small amount of calendar data onto a calendar. These two modules were really the only two I needed other than some other simple housekeeping modules. These were the only two I needed to scrape their website. Let me see if I can bring that up without too much trouble. Do, do, do. So this is their website. Gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> it's all the way down here. But here's a table of all the runs. But not historical ones, just, just the ones. It's a very simple PHP website that, um, that somebody's father um, put together a, a few years ago. And his daughter, um, with a little bit of help, maintains it. In fact, I, quite, I really like... <laughs> She didn't really. When I saw that, I thought, oh, maybe she's a web, web developer. And I mentioned something about putting IDs or something like that on the tags. And she looked, and again, she looked at me like, huh? <laughs> so I thought, okay, fine. We're just going to scrape this thing. <laughs> but that was okay because, yeah, there's a lot of other stuff on this page. And here's another thing that lets you know that, you, that somebody really wants calendaring. This is a very influential guy who, run, who organizes a number of events. His Pac-Man run in central London, not to be missed, really, if you can help it. Um, he's adapted the game of Pac-Man to running around and uh, having drinks. I have a photo or two of that. Another thing he runs every year is called Star Water Wars. <laughs> <laughs> People dress up as Star Wars figures and have a water fight and do, you know, it's just it's crazy. There are also a number of non-running or semi-running events. They're pub crawls because people that like to drink this much are not just going to drink when they're running <laughs> or around running. But this, essentially, this is a wiki page. It's a picture of a calendar. I saw this and I thought, oh, God, it's so close. And this guy is very, very technical in a sense. He's a structural engineer. He makes, he's one of the people that helps uh, make sure that things like uh, hospitals and supermarkets, the buildings don't fall down. Very technical person. And he was actually the first person that I eventually, after a number of weeks, or I don't know how long, convinced that calendaring would be a good thing. <laughs> Because even he, he'd made this picture of one. Want, he wants something, and he wanted the events to be on it, but nobody. He even put the, um, the, the uh, user ID and password of this page on the bottom. Oh, there's, there's the Pac-Man. <laughs> so, and then there's all these little images. <laughs> okay. No, funnily, funnily enough, but... This is a picture from a, uh, The Longest Day. It's a, it's a film about D, the D-Day landings. He explained to me once why that was on there, but he'd had about five pints, so I didn't really understand <laughs> it. <laughs> Another thing that was difficult, that, that kept me from doing this for quite a while, is because most of the time I'm talking to other people that could be a little helpful to me on this. I'm talking to them in the pub, after they're done talking to their, you know, about, to other people, and most of them, they just don't, you know, they're like, yeah, that's a great idea, or go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I persevered, <laughs> because in the back of my head, I just knew we wanted this. Here's another example of a type of run that, of special events that they run worldwide, by the way. 
the DC red dress run. This just happens to be an example. <laughs> That's a really nice image, actually. <laughs> One time, I think in San Diego, this is just a little color. <laughs> One time in San Diego, a, a woman flew in to visit a friend of hers who had become, who'd fallen under the spell of Hashers. And she was still wearing um, a nice outfit that she'd flown over with. And she thought they were going to go out and have a nice dinner and stuff like that. But no, the, this, this woman took her to somewhere. It wasn't actually pub-based, but it was a cross-country kind of run. <laughs> and she's wearing a red dress and low heels. <laughs> and so one of the other guys just laughed. They, well, probably all of them laughed at her and said, oh, you should wait in the car. And she said, screw you. And she ran <laughs> in this. And so it's become a tr it was a tradition for about 20 years. I, I haven't really got into that. but. <laughs> But they're run, uh, they, they run a big one in New Orleans. Thousands, probably tens of thousands pe of people turn up in red dresses for that one. So <clears throat> let's see if I can work out. My screen is like this big. It's only small anyway, and I have to, I have to see how I can get back to where I was. Sorry. Map, maps are great. <laughs> I can't even, cannot even see these, these icons, probably because I don't have my glasses on, so. Anyway, here we go, back to this. So, <clears throat> I've got a simple table. It never varies. They have so many events like this in the runs, you know, every week. They have enough trouble just getting somebody to lead the run because they have a different person that sets a trail every week and people run it. <clears throat> so this gives me, or it did, gives me wonderful API access, simple, it's a simple syntactic sugar basically around the Google's calendar, Google Calendar REST API. This is all I really needed to parse the table with the run information in it. I use that just for a simple lightweight um, database, just to save some run, run history, because there are people that just, this just create statistics from the runs. They give out, they tend, some of them, well, a lot of them give out um, beer mugs or, or something to commemorate your 100th run or something like that, so. But anyway, that was it. I was able to, to um, use this and have a, just a simple, simple bit of code it's about this long really to shove the, the information that I needed into into a calendar entry for each week and to keep it simpler yet you just run it once a day because the, the run data occasionally changes and they update the website so I just run it once a day, remove, if there's an entry for that day, remove it and put the new information on. So I kept the logic as small as I could. As you can see there's just, I, I get the, you know, you get the URL, because that never changes. Clean it up a little bit because there's usually a little bit of rubbish on, on the page. Just set, the headers, thankfully, for that table also never change. There's al almost more comments than there is code here. Trim it a bit more. Create a calendar entry here. Insert it. Done. But. There's always a but. Basically, it was rainbows and unicorns until that point, though. <laughs> I think for most people, they don't really need this explained. If they've ever tried to use um, uh, Google APIs recently, or in fact, Twitter, Facebook, all of the top social ones, ouch. So it's currently broken, but um, I, 
I strong arm somebody with a deep interest in this kind of thing who's made me a prototype of how to get back to where I was, essentially. I'm going to have to do a little bit of programming to, to make it fit in there. I, I, and I may try to do it this weekend just to see if I could do it end to end. The biggest problem I had, has any, is there anybody here who's actually successfully using Google, um, the Google say any, a, any OAuth2 type APIs outside of websites? Cool. I want to talk to you. No. <laughs> but I, sorry? No, it's okay. I already, we, I already have a proto, there is a, I already have a prototype. I just honestly couldn't be bothered outside of work, so. <laughs> but uh, that's the next step. It's nearly there. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks. We have uh, time for one question. When's the next run? <laughs> City hash every Tuesday. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. And...